It's my pleasure to introduce the executive producer of Nova for years and the executive producer of this show, Paula Apsel. <laughs> executive producer and my ultimate boss. So Hi. keep clapping. No, no. Yeah. Better be nice, right? <laughs> so we can't be promotional at TED, I know that, but you have not much more than 24 hours to set your DVRs, but I didn't say that. <laughs> So what is, what is the show? What is it about? What is the cosmos of the universe? Um, it's you have just, 10 seconds. Yeah, it's just about kind of little insignificant things <laughs> like space and time and the quantum realm and whether there's a universe or a multiverse. Not really about that much. <laughs> Dude, half the country's out of work. We have time for metaphysical things like this? Yeah, well, I think once you watch it, you just kind of, at first, it gives you a little bit of a headache. <laughs> At least it certainly did. You're made. right, this isn't promotional. Right. But then, all of a sudden, you start to think, and you kind of realize that our intuition and our senses deceive us when it comes to figuring out what the world is really about. For example, on tomorrow night's program, Space, you know, if you took all, everything out of this room, the chairs, you, um, the curtains, the TED signs, and then finally pumped every molecule of air out and you took out the cosmic rays that are sort of flying through here and everything else, you would say it's empty, right? That's cosmic, that's common sense. But in fact, space is really full. The same thing with time. Einstein says past, present, and future all may be an illusion, however persistent. What we think of time may just be 100% wrong. This is already giving me a headache. <laughs> <coughs> it's, it's very deep, David. Yeah, exactly. Right. And how many episodes? There are, there are four episodes, and they go on. The, the other two episodes are about quantum mechanics and then <coughs> the multiverse. How did this whole thing come about? Was it Brian Greene, hey, we're going to do another one? No, well, you know, we did The Elegant Universe. was about string theory, and string theory is a super esoteric theory um, that not even all scientists accept. And there's absolutely positively nothing that you can visualize in it. So it's like terrible for television, right? <laughs> um, and that's why we did it, because we really like challenges here at WGBH. But um, Brian, as a physicist, he has a really special quality that he really thinks in terms of visual metaphor. And his book, if any of you have ever read it, is, is filled with, with metaphors. And when we put the series on the air, we, um, we really felt that we had done something innovative. On the other hand, we didn't actually know if anybody would watch it, and we were afraid they wouldn't, And because uh, it seemed like a bridge too far. Um, but um, when it went on the air, it really got a tremendous response. So it had, we had always intended in, of doing, we had to like rest for a while, like about seven years. Um, no, we actually, um, typical of public television, we decided pretty much, a after we had a rest period of about a year, we decided we wanted to do another series, and Brian was writing The Fabric of the Cosmos. And so, typical of what we do here, it took us four years to raise the money and then three years to make the series. And then tomorrow night we'll know if uh, people will like it. <laughs> We really hope they will because um, it's been a huge challenge but great fun to do it and to figure out all these imagined environments that you can put yourself in to kind of contemplate the deepest questions of the universe. But we'll see because in the end it's up to you and uh, tell your friends and relations, okay, about the series. So, so what, I, what I'm getting from this is that you now have two outstanding, clear-speaking, witty, handsome Nova hosts, is that right? Yes. You, you can tell us, nobody's, nobody's listening. Which, who's funnier, Brian or me? I don't know, will any, is, I just, is anybody here gonna tell? It's just being streamed online. Oh, you know, we, ju we just have such an embarrassment of riches here, David, yeah, yeah. that it's, it's really great. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I can't Thank wait to see it. Much, Paul Absol, my boss. Lying just beneath everyday reality is a world we hardly recognize. A breathtaking world where much of what we perceive about the universe is wrong. What if you took all this stuff away? 
A world where the void of space is not nothing, but something. A world where time can bend and flex. Why do we only see events unfold in one direction? Why don't we ever see them happen in reverse order? According to the laws of physics, this can happen. It's a world that's come to light as we probe the most extreme realms of the cosmos, from black holes to the Big Bang to the very heart of matter itself. I'm gonna have what he's having. Here, empty space can teem with ferocious activity. Over the largest distances, dark energy dominates the contents of the universe. And we don't know what it is. Our universe might be one of numerous parallel realities. Somewhere, there's a duplicate of you and me and, and everyone, everyone else. else. The distinction between past, present, and future may be just an illusion. Our experience of time is very much one of the present, of the now. Physics does radical violence to this everyday experience of time. But how could this be? How could we be so wrong about something so familiar? Does it bother us? Absolutely. There's no principle built into the laws of nature that say that Theoretical physicists have to be happy. That is the most bizarre thing of quantum mechanics. It is impossible to even comprehend. Don't even ask why. Don't ask how it works. It's an illegal question. All we can say is that is apparently the way the world ticks. Right this way, Mr. Green. It's a game-changing perspective on the true nature of reality that opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Bonjour, Monsieur Green. These are the guts of a quantum computer. It can do more things at once than there are elementary particles in the universe. It's a vision of the cosmos grounded firmly in science, but one that stretches the imagination. Is the three-dimensional world an illusion? What is space? We actually still don't really know. It is one of the deepest mysteries in physics. As we examine the fabric of the cosmos ever more closely, we may well find far more surprises than anyone ever imagined. The Fabric of the Cosmos with Brian Greene on NOVA, premiering November 2nd on PBS.